stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. And it's a good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We have a lot to talk about today, but first, coffee. Mexican, Chiapas, Ethiopian, and Guatemalan. Earthy, floral, with a touch of caramel. Perfect, with a little bit of cream in it. Teaspoon of sugar or honey, perfect. You would love it. Strap yourself in because some people are going to get butt hurt today. I'm kind of like the doctor with bad bedside manners that says, if you don't stop doing this, you're going to die. Right? I always think it's better to be slapped with the truth than to be kissed with a lie. He's got this dream about buying some land. He's going to give up the booze and the one-night stands, and then he'll settle down in some quiet little town and forget about everything. Jerry Rafferty, 1977. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to see how marvelous, how wonderful you are. Jeremy Camp, 2004. Wow, it's been that long. That's amazing. Half of your prayers are like the man who jumps off a cliff and then asks God to turn off gravity just for him. This is the part that's going to hurt. You jump off a cliff, on your way down, falling down, you're like, Dear God, turn gravity off. God will not turn off gravity for you. There's consequences to things. Half of your prayers are asking God to deliver you from things, from the consequences of your folly. Nature is going to work. God is not going to suspend gravity because all of a sudden you're reaching out to him. Make that decision before you jump off the cliff. Some of you have gotten in relationships, and then you're asking for prayer for those relationships and for deliverance. And you want God to just make everything all better for you because you made a bad decision. Sorry, homie. It doesn't work like that. Make the good judgment before you make the decision. It's just like I said. Half of your prayers, of your breaths to God are, Lord, deliver me from this. How about this? Lord, here's a prayer for you. Lord, deliver me from bad decision-making. Marriage, relationships, career, and family. Three biggest areas where we have the most pain in our lives. And a lot of that comes from just misguided relationships. Misguided decision-making along the way. If you can relate to that, put a comment down below, please. You don't have to tell me your whole story. Or you can actually send me an email. If you want it to be 100% private and confidential, please put confidential somewhere at the top of the email. My email is gb at georgebruno.com. And while you're there, sign up for my private unstuck email list. Love lost, such a cost. Give me things that don't get lost, like a coin that won't get tossed, rolling home to you. Old man, look at my life. I'm a lot like you. Neil Young, 1972. Stop making excuses for the person that screwed you over, even if that person was you. Stop making excuses for the people that did you wrong. 
There have been people who've done you wrong. Male, female, bosses, neighbors, strangers. I know that. Stop making excuses for them. It is what it is. But I take it one step further and tell you, stop making excuses for that person, even if the person that screwed you over is yourself. Well, I was born to this. I was raised without a father, raised by a drug addict mother. I was in and out of jail. All right, I get all that. And I will go easy on people who have mitigating, mitigating circumstances in their life. But how long are you going to blame a bad relationship, an addiction, bad decision-making, a mom, a dad. I know if I dig deep enough in all of you, I can find a reason why you would be really screwed up. Same thing with myself. But use your circumstances as a springboard for good, for positive, for achievement, for moving the ball even just an inch down the field in your favor. It reminds me of the twins, identical twins. One was a successful CEO, one was in prison for life. And they were interviewed in this twin study. They asked the guy who was in, who was a, a CEO of a company, they said, why do you think you are the way you are? And he says, if you knew the kind of father that I had, they asked the guy in prison, why are you in prison for the rest of your life? What, what excuse or what reason? He said, if you knew the kind of father I had. Now, there's no, there was no explanation of what the father was, what the background was, but both used their experience as a reason and as a springboard to get where they are now. One was behind bars. One is at the top of a successful corporation. So you and I can really scheme a reason why you have failed. I've done it to myself. It's called self-deception, where you blame other people. In Nuthetic Counseling, they call it blame shifting. And I was taught to spot blame shifting when people start blame shifting, where nothing is their fault. Everything happens to them. I told you this was going to be a rough one for some of you but it might be just what you need to hear. It's better to be slapped with the truth than to be kissed with a lie. Stop making excuses for the person that screwed you over, even if it was you. Smash until you die. Your body is created to work till you die. You are meant to urinate right to the very end. You're meant to poop until the very end. Your tummy is meant to digest your food, your GI system, till you die. Your sexual organs were created to work till you die. Now, you don't stop. It, well, it, let me put it this way. There are times when it comes to functions, when your you need to take a break from things. Fasting is purposeful when it's a short period of time. Sleep, you need to do it because your brain needs to relax until you die. Dr. Weil talks about death by old age is, he says you live a long, healthy life where everything's working. Everything's working, including your sexual apparatus. It works until there's the rapid onset of age-related conditions, and then you succumb quickly and die of old age. You don't hear people dying of old age now. You hear people dying of diseases. Everyone has a disease. I remember growing up, and some of you older people will remember, I remember asking, so, you know, if it, when, when a relative died, what did they die of, dad or mom? And they said, well, they died of old age. Their body wore out, and everything just stopped. Nothing is supposed to stop working until you die or are close to death. Then there's the, 
you succumb to the rapid onset of age-related conditions. So you might not be having sex as much when you're older, but you still can be having sex. Not smashing is like not eating, sleeping, or shitting. If you're not having sex, if, you're, if your sexual organs are not being used, and this is not about morality or ethics or religion in any way, if they are not being used, smash deprivation is no different than all other deprivations. Sometimes you stay away from it, so for a little while, which some people would call monk mode or no fap. And then when you do, you appreciate it that much more. I remember Cernovich talking about staying away from sugar, all forms of sugar, even with fruit. And then when you eat an apple, it's like, wow, this thing is sweet. You eat a banana and you're like, wow. But when you're constantly putting sugar in your body, not just your taste buds, but your body is not used to it. And then when you do have a little bit, it's like, wow. It reminds me of relationship fasting. When people are away from each other, when they finally do see each other, they appreciate each other that much more. They cherish each other's bodies more. They appreciate the, the sexual experience much more than if they're just doing it all the time. But it should never, ever come to a complete stop. I believe we are meant to have sex to the day we die. Now, are you going to have porn star sex? No, that's not going to happen when you get older. But you can have sex till you die. And I'm not injecting morality in there. Someone had said, well, how do you reconcile that with your faith? I don't. It's, to me, it's not a faith issue. It's not a faith issue. I don't want a harem. I'm not interested in a harem. I lived like that for a while, where I always had anywhere between seven and ten women going at all times, spinning plates all the time. I am now interested in the company of one woman. That's where I'm at. I don't want to keep track of anything or anybody. I like the idea of one woman. That works for me. It might not work for you. Or you might say, I'm taking some time off. Uh, I'm going my own way. That's cool. It's a nice place to visit, but you don't want to live there. You were made, you were made and designed to be. It, it's almost like a person who says, "I'm done eating." Every time I eat, I get sick, so I'm done eating. Well, guess what? If you stop eating, you're going to die. So you have to do something about that. The answer is not starving yourself to death in relationships. I'm done with women. I'm going my own way. I've had it. So I'm not going to be with any more. It could kill you. As I've said, this is not a men going their own way channel. There are some channels that are for that. I'm not afraid to say my name. My name is George Bruno, also known as the Sultan of Silver in the hair industry. I live outside of Philadelphia, four miles outside of Philadelphia. I cut hair, I shave, I do beards, I do blowouts. I make people look beautiful. I'm not afraid to give you my personal details. I don't hide behind avatars. I don't hide behind little weird little names. I am who I am. I have no fear whatsoever. None whatsoever. I don't want to be anonymous. I'm not interested in being anonymous with my advice. As a matter of fact, I'm starting a meetup probably within the next month in the Philadelphia area. So if you're within a couple hours of Philly, we're going to get together. I'll give you a place and a time, and we're going to have a good time. But I like the idea of getting real. I know in the men's world and in women's counseling world, men hide a lot. Oh, for fear of being outed or I could lose my job. Okay, stop it. Be real. Be real. That's where I put my foot down and say, I've got nothing to hide. You should have nothing to hide either. 
Do you enjoy the company of one woman or many women? What do you want in your life? Whatever is right for you, follow through on. If you have morality issues, moral dilemmas with your choices, then you have to seriously think about those things, especially when it comes to religion. But pitching a tent and building a house on a certain, in a certain area are so different. Did I go my own way and say, I'm done at one time? Yeah, but I pitched a tent. I didn't build a house there. I didn't build a permanent structure. Don't do that to yourself. Rather, you know what it reminds me of? People who learned how to ride a bike and they fell a few times, everyone did. Did you say, that's it, I'm done learning how to ride a bike? I'm done. No, you kept doing it until you perfected it, till you could ride a bike. Did you ever hear of a boxer going in the ring, losing one fight, and then said, that's it, I'm done? No, you keep doing it until you win, you train, and you drill, and you practice until you become a winning entity. You don't quit because you had one bad experience. If your mama and dad didn't, kept, didn't keep picking you up when you were two years old and helping you to walk, you'd still be crawling today because they were determined that you were going to keep trying until you walk. You picked yourself up, held on the couch or the coffee table, and you walked to a chair, and everyone clapped. Good, good. It's the same thing in life. You don't have to dive into marriage when it comes to relationships. You can dive into an acquaintance that grows and blossoms if you are shy, if you're gun shy, if you've made some bad mistakes. Many times and I'm speaking to the men, many times there's a lot of women out there who've made a lot of mistakes too. Many, many women. And, and when people come together in humility and saying, yeah, I blew it. I've made some pretty damn bad mistakes. There is a possibility, especially if you're older, that you might even strike up a halfway decent relationship with somebody based upon the fact that you're both humiliated by making wrong decisions in life. That could be the commonness and you're determined to make it work. And then you still have the opportunity to maintain frame. You still have the opportunity to be your own mental point of origin rather than submitting to someone else's. You're complete the way you are. This you complete me crap, forget that. You're complete by yourself. And what you offer in a union or a relationship is a full person, not half a person. Most of your trouble has come from when you offered 75% or only felt confident 75% of the time. Be your own mental point of origin. Never poll others for data to be used to modify your behavior. You are the prize. You are the reward. Now act like it. Let's read from the blog. I remember having a firefighter's Sunday at church. It was a service that honored and thanked firefighters in their role in the town that I lived in. Do you have a firefighter's Sunday at your church or house of worship? It might not be a bad idea. The main message is that there is no rescue without sacrifice. It's almost a gospel-like message. Every time they respond, they don't know for sure if they will be back. No firefighter, no firefighter ever receives the call without knowing this could be my last call. 
but that's the risk that they take. No first responder ever thinks they're going to die when they leave the house and eventually leave the station. I'm sure it's in the back of their minds that any call could be the big one. And from what I've seen from the volunteer firefighters in my country, in the United States of America, they step up to the plate without a second thought. I don't know, some of you might be firefighters. So there was, in the bulletin at church, there was the firefighter's prayer. And I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to enjoy this. When I am called to duty, God, where the fr- flame may rage, give me strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it's too late, or save some older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout and quickly and effectively to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and give the best in me to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to your will I have to lose my life, please bless with your protecting hand my loving family from strife. The Firefighter's Prayer. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who have operated in a first responder, whether it be firefighter or emergency medical technician, paramedics, people that are first on the scene, police officers, agents who are there to help people to get through a crisis, to bring peace to chaotic situations, to bring order to disorder. My hat's off to you, and I want to thank you for that. Many years ago, I was in an apartment building, and the water boiler tank, the the tank emptied, but the burner I don't know what the proper terminology is. The jets that boil the water kept going. They didn't turn off even after the water was gone. And what happened was the whole tank was glowing red hot. And the furnace became literally red hot. Paint was bubbling up on the walls in the basement of this apartment house that had five apartments in it. And you started smelling stuff at two o'clock in the morning. I had, and this was in the days before there was even such a thing as 911. You called the operator, zero. And then they called the, they relayed the call to uh, the fire department. I'm not kidding you. Within two minutes, within two minutes, The firefighters were there and they blocked off the street because it was a gas fired burner, furnace, whatever you want to call it. They shut off the gas to the block and to the apartment building, got everybody out. Everyone was out like in their sweats and pajamas, that kind of thing. And when everything was dealt with, one of the firefighters said to me, it's a good thing that you called because that could have ended really tragically for everybody here. But in two minutes, they were there. I will never forget how fast they responded to something that could have been really, really bad at two o'clock in the morning. So if you are a first responder of any type, thank you very much for your service. It's not going unappreciated with me. So finish your coffee. 2019 is the year that you get unstuck. Don't forget to subscribe at georgebruno.com to my private unstuck emails that are starting up soon. Talk to you soon. Thanks.